<coughs> All right. Okay. okay. So your I've, I've set my bolster up. I know that not all of you have a bolster, so please don't worry if you don't. But just come to lie down on something. Some of us, um, if you come to my class regularly, we often start lying on a brick. So you could use that, or equally, you could use a blanket. I, I just think that having a blanket to hand whenever you practice yoga is a really, really good idea. And you can basically, if you've got a blanket or even a towel, you could roll it up into a little bit of sausage. You could substitute that for your bolster, put it in the middle of the mat, put something, maybe a cushion or something for a bit of a pillow for you, and then just lie down. And lie down with it along your spine, make sure that your head is supported, put something underneath your no. head. Yeah? Are you muting everyone? No, not yet. That's true. All right. Okay. I'm almost, I'm on it. Thank you. <laughs> it, all, it all makes for great video. <laughs> so just remember that you can unmute yourself if you need to and wave at me if you um, need me at any stage. I have got you on my little iPad over here. Okay, so good. Right, come and lie down. And if you need to, I, so the idea is I want your chest a little bit higher. I want something kind of opening up the top of the chest, whether it's the book you're lying on or a rolled up towel or a blanket, just something that is going to enable you to relax and open the chest, maybe take the arms out to the sides, maybe take the arms above the head. That might be a bit too much at such early stage in the practice. So probably better just to keep the hands down by your sides. Legs can be straight away from you, or knees can be bent, or soles of the feet together, knees out wide for a Sutra Vada Konasana. So this is really familiar now. We've been doing this a lot in the practices that we shared over the past couple of weeks. And yeah, so quite a nice way to begin for us to do some breathing. Um, okay. So settling yourself down and just readying yourself for your practice. So, so yeah, so thinking about thinking about equipment wise, just just come to come to class if you like. Treat it, treat your, your lounge or your spare room as, as your practice space and just make sure it's fully equipped with all the things that you might possibly need really really good idea to to kind of grab the sorts of things that we would use in an ordinary class like a strap uh like a like a block or a cushion or a towel and we're going to think about doing a little bit of breathing work as we do normally at the start of our practices together and so to begin with, let's just start by bringing the breath down into the belly and allowing the belly to gently expand as the breath comes in and allowing the belly to, to decrease the fall back towards the spine as the breath goes out. And use the next few exhalations to properly allow your body to start to sink and release and begin this process of unwinding. That's why it's so nice to practice at the end of the day as we are now, because we just, we kind of can, can shed the layer of the day and prep ourselves really nicely for, for a good sleep. And that's going to be important tonight because we've got this lovely super moon. Um, so maybe if the sky is clear tonight, try and get a glimpse of the moon. If you've got crystals indoors, put them on your windowsill and let them get let them get charged. Or if better, even better, you should go and bury them in the in the earth in your back garden so that they get charged by the moon and the moon's energies tonight. Okay. And. In light of the, the podcasts I was referring to, the Rich Roll podcast, 
definitely worth investigating. Um, I thought I'd share with you a quote from Iyengar. Iyengar is uh, one of the, if you like, the godfathers of, of yoga. And he has a whole practice named after him, his whole stylized practice. And he said, health is not a commodity to be bargained for. It has to be earned through sweat. Health is not a commodity to be bargained for. It has to be earned through sweat. And whilst you're probably not going to get sweaty tonight, you are going to work hard. The theme for this week's practices are going to be around the shoulders. We're going to be opening up and strengthening the shoulders. And in doing so, we're also going to be creating space around the energetic heart center, which lies in the center of your chest. Forget where the, where the heart organ itself is. Think about where the energy lies in the middle of your chest. And lying here as you are now, you get that opportunity to open up or begin to open up some space. So breathe. I'd like you to begin to count your breath. So most of you will be familiar with doing this with me. So you're going to breathe in for a slow count of four and then breathe out for a slow count of four. I'm not going to count you. You can do that in your own head. The most important thing to remember with any breathing exercise is that you take it at your own pace and that you don't fight your own breath. Don't have a battle. We've got enough battles to fight in all other areas. The breath and any breath work should be relatively easy and not necessarily simple, but sort of straightforward for your body and your, your, your senses to cope with. So now you're going to increase the exhalation. So you're going to breathe in for four and out for six, please. We're just, again, reinforcing this idea of, of slowing down and of letting go. And then after your next exhalation, breathe in for four and out for eight. Feel free to adjust the ratio of breath as is necessary for you. And if you think that breathing out for a count of eight is too strong, then please reduce it back down to six. Or even just continue with the sum of Ritti Pranayama, the equal breath in for four, out for four. Now, whatever position you're lying in, on your next exhalation, so you're still working with your count, but on your next exhalation, I want you to lift your pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor, if you think about in the center of the pelvic floor, around about where the perineum is, or slightly deeper inside the body, the vaginal walls, you want to lift there. So lift and squeeze as you breathe out. Notice how this begins to tone the lower abdomen. You can soften a little bit as you breathe in, but then on the next exhalation, squeeze, lift, feel the, the container. This is a very stabilizing action to take. We've touched upon this a lot in the past few, few classes. So it will be becoming more and more familiar. And for some of the poses that we do tonight, you're gonna to need to use this, this root lock, this mula bandha, this pelvic floor lift. Okay. So do one more round, one more in for four, out for eight with a pelvic lift, mula bandha. And after the exhalation, when it comes, slowly begin to return your breath to normal.
And before we move from this position, I'd like you to sweep your arms up and over your head, please. And just lengthen the legs away if the legs aren't already straight, but just have a nice big reach through the fingertips. Maybe point the toes, but be mindful of what you're resting upon and the shape of your spine. And then floating the arms back down by your sides, bending your knees, and you can roll over onto your side and take away any props, take away anything that you have on your mat for the moment and come down into a child's pose. So feet together, big toes together, bottom back towards the heels. Maybe your hands around by your ankles and your head on the floor, but if you need a bit of extra height, you could use your brick and put your forehead on your brick. I'm just gonna call it a brick, even though I know lots of you don't have the brick, you've got a book. But just for, for tonight, I'm just going to call it the brick. And if you need to have your forehead resting on something, such a, such a nice thing to have is a little bit of, of height, a little bit of extra um, support for the head. Make sure it's not too low down. It's not making you feel claustrophobic. Okay, so then... When you're ready, let's slide the fingertips forwards towards the top of your mat, please, and then float up to an all fours position. And we're going to take an inhalation here. So lift the tailbone, let the navel drop half forwards, and then exhale round the back of the body into a cat stretch, spread the shoulder blades apart. Then breathe in again into cow. So the toes need to be tucked under this time. So lift the tailbone, tuck the toes under, navel drops. And then bottom can move backwards towards the heels slightly before you lift your knees up slowly off of the floor. Unravel the backs of your legs. Let your head hang in between your arms and have a pedal with your heels. So you're going to stay here for a few breaths. So just allow maybe the hips to dance a little from side to side, the heels to press downwards towards the ground. You don't have to come into a really stationary downward facing dog. But do let the head hang. Do draw the navel upwards towards the spine. Lifting the tailbone now, steadying the feet, lifting up the sit bones and lifting up two through the pelvic floor. Press into the mat through the palms, the index finger and the thumb side of the palm in particular. And then think about wrapping the shoulder blades around the back of your body. And you're gonna hold this for another couple of breaths, please. So just stay here. <laughs> Keep breathing. And a little bit of lift to the pelvic floor on the exhalation. Okay, one more breath. Good job. Then inhale when you're ready and float your knees slowly back down to the ground. And you're going to come to rest on your tummy. So you might need to take your feet back a bit further and lower yourself down. Take your hands down by your sides and scoop your elbows in towards the sides of your ribcage. Have your fingertips pointing forwards. We're going to lengthen the legs, so just lift the legs and point the toes towards the end of the mat. And then you're going to really use your leg strength here to give stability to a back bend. We're going to come into cobra pose. So when you're ready, take a breath in, press gently into the palms and firm the legs. Lengthen the legs, press the tops of the feet into the floor. Lift up, but don't force or strain and then gently come back down. So we're going to do that a couple more times. Let's go at your own pace. Breathe in, lift up, firm the legs, firm the buttocks, and exhale down. And then this last one, we're going to think about as we come up, all the same things, bit of lift to the pelvic floor, but let's take the shoulders back, chest opens. Lovely, come back down. Just for a moment, make a pillow for your forehead to rest on and wiggle your hips from side to side. 
All right. So then, popping your hands back under your shoulders, take a little bit of a mini press up to come up to all fours and come to sit. If you can, come and sit kneeling. You're going to need your strap. So this is a modified uh, Virasana. If you find it difficult to sit onto your heels, then you could put your brick underneath you to sit on to give you something to support so you're not maybe squashing your uh, ankles. If however sitting like this is not great for you for your knees or anything else then please choose a different seated position or you can stand up. So most of you again will have done this with me before so you're going to hold the strap <clears throat> nice and taut, arms out in front of you and try not to let this happen in your back. Just lengthen your tailbone down towards the floor. Draw the navel in, a little bit of lift to Mulabandha. So you've got this stability happening here in your core. This is important. Try and hold on to Mulabandha lift throughout. And then the arms are going to come up and over and out behind you. So don't have the hands too close together to begin with. Try to keep the arms nice and straight. Avoid bending the elbows and keep the strap taut. And you're just going to keep going backwards and forwards, but keep the tailbone lengthening towards the ground. A little bit of lift into the abdomen and a lift at the pelvic floor. Okay, so that then we take some of the focus away from the shoulders. And whilst this is a great exercise, I've talked to you about this a lot, and for, for mobilizing the shoulders and freeing up tension in the shoulder joint. But also if we work with the stability in the lower part of the body, we're training ourselves for upside down practices. Okay, so come back and just for a couple of rounds, take the hands a tiny bit closer together. So you're just narrowing the distance, not much, and do a couple more and just see whether your shoulders will allow that to happen. If they don't, don't force it. Just slide the uh, palms a little bit further away from each other. And you'll know when you lose your mulabandha because your lower back starts to move. So try to keep it nice and steady. And you're going to do one more of these, all right? Just one more. Okay, next time the hand is behind you, leave it there. Good job. And then lift it up a little bit. Keep Mulabandha lifted. Lift it up a little bit more, just a tiny bit. And then take it all the way up and over. Well done. Pop the strap down, give the hands a bit of a shake out. And then take the hands behind the body, link the fingers together, roll the shoulders back. And then if you remember from last week, we just pointed the heads of the shoulders forwards rather than letting everything come right back. Just keep the heads of the shoulders pointing forwards, but lift the arms away from the back of your body if you can. If this is impossible, grab your strap and use that in between your hands, just to give you a bit of distance so that you can make it a little bit more manageable. So, tailbone down, navel in, mulabandha lifted, find that stability from the base of your spine, and then gently release the hands. Shake them out again, bring the arms out in front of you please, bend the elbows, take your right elbow on top of your left, wrap the hands around and then just move the fingertips upwards towards the ceiling please bring them back down so we're not doing anything with the spine here apart from the pelvic floor lift but bring the arms up and then bring them back down good job one more time and back down don't worry if you didn't move very far with that one shake it out and swing the arms out and then bring them out in front again, elbows bent, left on top of right and wrap them round. Don't worry if you can't hold on, remember the, the normal modification is to hold the opposite shoulder up if you can't wrap them round. And then inhale the arms up high, feel the stretch across the back and top of the shoulders and come back down. 
And again, coming up, breathe in and out. Good, one more time, breathe in. I'm hoping you're starting to get a little bit warmer now and come back down a little bit and release a little bit more kind of heat being generated in your body. Okay, so pop your strap out of the way and your brick and come back onto all fours for a moment. And then again, when you're ready to breathe out, round the back of the body into a cat stretch. And as you breathe in, lengthen through a cow stretch, front body lengthening. Then breathing out, cat stretch again. Breathe in into cow. Good, drop your bottom backwards towards your heels and soften your head down momentarily. Take a breath here, breathe in and breathe out. And then come back to lay on your tummy again. Bring the hands by your sides. We're going to come into Shalabhasana. I'm going to invite you to take the hands behind the back of the body and to link the fingers, to roll the shoulders back a little bit, but keep the heads of the shoulders forwards. If you know that this isn't going to work for your back or for your arms or shoulders, please just have the hands loose by your sides. Think about the legs, firm, lengthen the legs, firm the legs, bring the big toes towards one another, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another, and as you breathe in, come up. So hands lift, feet lifts, and you're gonna hold this here for a couple of breaths, please. If it's too strong to hold, come up and down with your breath. Don't worry about how high you're lifting. Try and keep the heads of the shoulders pointing forwards, legs nice and firm, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the hamstrings, lengthen the arms, take another breath in, and as you breathe out, gently come down, release the hands, turn the head to one side, give the hip, uh, hips a bit of a wiggle. Good job, hands underneath your shoulders, lift up to all fours, drop the bottom briefly back towards the heels again. This just helps to put some space back in the spine, helps to neutralize the spine. Remember, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's more um, common for us to fold forwards or to be in a forward a flexion of the spine. Back bends are not so common. That's why we find them harder because we just don't do enough of them. But forward bends are quite nice. We're so used to doing them, then they, they give us a chance to be quite soft. So take that opportunity for inviting a little bit of softness into your practice. Okay. Right, Sophie, I totally neglected you, haven't I? <laughs> okay, so, oh, it doesn't matter now. I'll do it another time though. Oh, need, I need to remember, I need to be better <laughs> at remembering. I'm so sorry. Okay, so you're going to come back onto all fours and sit, please. Okay. All right, so if you can just sit with your knees bent, obviously if this is uncomfortable or it may presents a challenge or if you need to have your feet wider apart or even sitting in a cross-legged position, we're gonna take a twist, you see. So I want you just to sit in a way that is good for you. Some of you will be able to sit with the knees like this. You're going to hug the knees with one hand so they're just, they're not tight close in towards you. If you're sitting cross-legged, you're gonna take your hand towards the opposite knee. We'll turn to the right, first of all. So bring the right hand behind you. Doesn't matter which way you're sitting, but just sit upright, turn around, look over your right shoulder, or keep hugging around the front of the knees. Now the spine needs to stay upright. And remember, we twist on the exhalation. So keep breathing in and up and breathing out to look. And then think about the pelvic floor lifting. Think about the stability in the lower part of your abdomen, which facilitates these twists. I'm going to stay for two more breaths. Remember, don't 
Force yourself, don't push too hard. Good job. Then on your next inhalation, come back to the centre and swap the hands around. So hug the knees with the other hand or take the knee towards the opposite knee. Left hand comes behind and you're turning again to look over the left shoulder. Opening up the heart and breathing. Okay. And then on another inhalation, coming back to the center. Very nice. Now sliding the legs away from you. We're going to fold forwards just in a soft manner, okay? So if you need a little bit of extra space, you take your feet wider apart. Uh, if you are struggling with tight hamstrings, bend the knees, put something underneath the knees like your blanket or your brick. Untuck the flesh of your sit bones, so you found your sit bones to sit on. And I'm looking for you to find your feet. If you can't find your feet with ease, grab your strap and just loop it around the soles of your feet. Think about, before we kind of collapse down into it, think about putting a little bit of lift into the, to the low belly, a little bit of lift to the pelvic floor, and trying to take the low ribs along your legs. And then once you've done that, then the chin can come towards the chest. And then the crown of the head moves in the direction of the toes. But don't force this, okay? Keep breathing. Keep it nice and soft. So Sophie, take your feet wide apart. Sophie, can you hear me? So take your feet wide apart and just fold forwards. Yeah, don't worry about not just grab your leggings and hold on to your leggings maybe and just do it that way, but just allow yourself to round. It's fine, Sophie. Okay. Good. And then you can, on an inhalation, everybody, start to unravel, start to unwind, come up to an upright position and just lean with your hands behind you. And some of you might find that just having your hands on the floor, you need them a few inches behind your hips, but you might just like to press gently into the palms and lift the front of the chest. That's one option. Or option number two is to point the toes and to lift the front of the hips, lengthening the tailbone in the direction of the uh, heels, Lifting through the front of the body as strong as you can. Press down through the hands in order to lift up through the chest. Look up towards the ceiling. Hold this here for another breath or you're keeping your bottom on the floor and lifting your chest towards the ceiling in a little bit of a back bend but without the lift. Good. And then gently come forwards or come down. Very nice. And you're going to sweep your legs around towards one side. And you're going to come onto your forearms, everybody. So for some of you, if you've got a brick, it's quite nice to have this. These make such a great guide because you can have your hands wrapped around and you can hold your, your fingers around the edges of them. But don't worry if you don't have one, you can do this quite adequately without. You're going to move your knees back just a tiny bit and we're putting a bit of strength into the upper body. Now obviously if you are a little bit uh, nursing any shoulder injuries or anything like that, just take a little bit of care and make sure that you kind of lift a little bit your pelvic floor here. So you're going to tuck your toes under and you're going to move the heels back and come into a forearm plank. So shoulders are over your wrists. Heels are pressed back, and there's a little bit of lift to the front of the belly, front of the hips. You can stay here for a few breaths if you can, but as soon as you're ready to come out, you come back down onto your knees and into a child's pose if you, if you want. Okay, so keep going. Keep holding your lovely planks. Very nice. Keep breathing. And then. Let's gently pop the knees down onto the ground. 
Okay, come up to a, a kneeling position and just give the shoulders a little bit of a roll up. Okay, so you can kind of feel that we, we in order to, to, to progress in our yoga practices, we need the, the blend all of the time of, of strength as well as flexibility. And we normally have a bit of one or a bit of, or, or a bit of the other. And um, we're gonna keep working on building up strength in the upper body now. So if you have the luxury, and I know some of you do, if you have two bricks, then you are very welcome to use these to put your hands onto now. If you haven't got two bricks, then you're going to do this next one without. So you're, it's, this is a little bit of a back bend. What I would suggest, um, Sophie, is if you be very, very gentle with this, okay? So don't go too deep into this at all, Sophie. Um, we're going to do uh, upward facing dog. And that requires the arms to be straight. But before we get into the arm position, what I want you to do is, from your all fours, is bring your hips forwards so your shoulders move slightly forwards. And then I want you to lift your chest up and press your body weight into the top of your palms. Now that could be all that you do. Some of you might want to tuck your toes under and just lift your knees off of the floor. Some of you might like to press back through your heels and lower your hips even more, making a deeper back bend, so take super care. All right, hold this for another breath, lift the tops of the shoulders and the heart forwards, and then pop the knees gently back down, untuck the toes, and come into child's pose. You can have your knees wide apart, if you need to. Let the wrists roll out because the wrists take a little bit of, of, of strength work here and so they might just need a little bit of rotation. There's nothing wrong with taking your body weight into your hands and getting your body used to holding that weight there. Okay, so we're going to come into upward facing dog again, which is just a nice pose. We often do it as part of the sun salutes. We don't very often focus on it on, um, on its own. So we're gonna come back into the all fours position. You can put your hands on your bricks if you're using them. And then remember what we did at the start, we, we moved the hips forwards. So it's almost as though we're bringing the heads of the shoulders in front of the wrists. This time, leave the toes untucked, press into the tops of the feet, make sure the legs are nice and long. Firm the legs, firm the bottom, let the hips drop, but lift the heart and look up, because this is upward facing dog. So that's where the gaze goes, the head faces up. Okay, and then gently knees down, bottom back towards the heels, just softly rolling back and softening out the wrists. And breathe. Okay, come up onto your hands and knees, tuck under your toes, find a down dog now, so head down, looking backwards towards your toes, maybe a dance of the hips, maybe a pedal through the heels, or maybe not, just holding, lengthening, pressing into the tops of the palms, sort of externally rotating the upper arm bone, so you feel the shoulder blades are wrapping their way across the back of your body. Good job. And then walking your hands and your feet closer together. And we'll start with the feet fairly wide apart or as wide apart as you need them to be for your back, for your baby, for whatever it is that's holding you in this pose and just making you be a little bit more careful. Let the head hang. And that means bringing the chin towards the chest. Letting the palms rest on the floor if you can and lifting up through the sit bones. Really think about creating some space and some length into the back of the legs. Hold this here for another breath. And then slowly walking your hands up the front of your legs. 
and coming slowly up to stand. Rolling the shoulders back a couple of times once you get there. And then if you have the luxury of a bit of wall, go and stand with your back against it, please. So don't worry if I can't see you for this one, you're not going to be doing anything crazy. We're just going to do a little bit of work to work with the alignment of the body, not even going to need much space other than what the back takes up. Okay, so you're going to have your back against the wall, the hips against the wall, the back of the shoulders and the back of the head all touching the wall. Then when you're ready, bring the hands up above your head and link the fingers. Turn the palms inside out and press upwards towards the ceiling, keeping the pinky fingers against the wall, close to the wall. Keep the back of the head on the wall, the back of the shoulders on the wall, the back of the hips. See if you can lengthen your tailbone towards your heels. And just feel how this is making you stand up and notice whether you've got anything going on in terms of are you, are you working, are both shoulders equally pressed against the wall or is one side of the body more open than the other? Okay, make sure that you're breathing. Good. And then on your next exhale, float the arms down. Just bring them out in front of you and down and then release. Give the arms a little bit of a swing. Okay, so we're going to do the same, uh, bring the arms above the head, but if you rather keep the hands apart like this, you can do. We're going to side bend and you need to try to keep the back of your body against the wall. So bring the hands again above your head, link the fingers, turn the palms inside out, option to leave the hands apart, remember, and then keeping all of the back of your body on the wall, take a side bend to your own measure. Okay, so notice how you want to roll forwards here and you've got to work super hard not to let that happen. Okay, come back to the centre when you're ready and gently go to the other side to your own measure again. Leaning over, notice that you, your arm wants to come away from the wall, it's almost natural. See if you can keep your pinky fingers on the wall, both shoulders on the wall, keep pressing the back of the body hard, and then come back to the center. Good job, let's release the hands and swing the arms out. Okay, so just simple things like being near a wall and using that to correct our alignment can make a really big difference to our practice. And hopefully you're feeling warm, hopefully your shoulders are feeling warm and you've got a little bit more mobility going on here. Okay, so step back onto your mat and stand in the middle facing the side as I am on mine. All right, good. Let's step the feet apart to about a metre. We're going to come into triangle pose and just like any of these poses you go at your own pace come into it deeply or back off out of it if necessary turn your right toes to point to the end of your mat turn the left toes in take the arms up to shoulder height and you're reaching towards the top of your mat taking your right hip back and then the right hand can come down onto the shin left hand goes straight up and you just find yourself easing into it to your own measure. Don't force the body, just go at your own pace. If you need to be up here or even up here, if this top arm's had enough, you can rest it on the back of your body. There's all sorts of things you can do. You're trying to get an external rotation to the upper thighs. You want to feel a stretch maybe on the inner right leg. And when you come into it, it becomes a side bend as well. So think about lengthening the left-hand side of your rib cage, but also the right-hand side. Don't let it collapse. Okay. So you're looking down now, taking an inhalation, coming up. Leave the hands at shoulder height, but walk your left foot a bit further back. Bend your right knee for warrior two pose. Taking the right fingertips to point to the top right-hand corner of your mat, the left fingertips to point to the back left-hand corner, 
and just sinking down into it to your own measure. Hold this here. Good job. And then you're going to take your right forearm onto your thigh and take your left arm alongside your ear. Your Pajvakonasana. Okay. Take another breath in here. Hold it for a bit longer. And then take an inhalation, come back up to warrior two and straighten the front leg. Lower the arms, leave the legs please. So we're going to come back into Pajvakonasana, but we're going to bind the pose. So um, we've done this a few times now, those of you that have been coming regularly. And if you come to my normal classes, we do this pretty regularly anyway. But remember, all of the stuff that I teach you, we do it in stages. So you're free to stop at a stage if you feel that's appropriate for you. Binding the pose means that you're going to hold your hands behind your back. Um, you might use your strap. If, uh, to help uh, give you a bit of extra length, if you like extra arm length. So let's come back into uh, warrior two. Forearm comes onto the thigh, left arm alongside the ear. So you could stay here, you could stay in warrior two. Those that want to, are gonna wrap their left arm around the back of the body. So if I turn around, you'll be able to see me. You need to have it near your waist, please near the back of your waist, back of your thigh. You don't want it down here where your bottom is, that's no good. So have it here. Then with your right arm, internally rotate and tuck the arm under the thigh so you can reach back to find the hand and hold the pose in a bind. Okay, so take your time, work through the stages and if you need to back out a bit, if it's too strong, just come out. If you want to come out of the pose and rest, that's okay too. Try to roll the top shoulder back, turn the heart, open the chest. Good job. And then we will release the bind. We'll inhale back to warrior two, so arms horizontal. And then exhale, lower the arms, straighten the front leg, and then you can turn the toes forwards and step your feet back together and give your legs a little bit of a shake. Nice. Okay, so let's do the same little sequence on the other side. So great for legs, great for leg strength, but primarily we're looking to open up the chest, open the heart and free the shoulders. So let's step the feet a meter apart. Turn the left toes out, turn the right toes in. Arms come up to shoulder height, reach, towards the other end of your mat now. Hand comes down, right hand goes up. You can look up towards your thumb. Keep breathing. Remember to only come as deep as you feel comfortable. This is your practice. Okay, and whilst we're all practicing together, whilst it's all great, we have to be mindful of, of what, our, what our bodies are telling us, what it likes, what it doesn't like. So don't come down so low if it feels too much. I'm going to take another breath in, nice big breath in. And out. Then as you breathe in, look down. As you breathe out, press into the feet to swing the arms up, come up to horizontal. Take the back foot back a little bit further so you're longer in your stance. And bend your left knee. Now try not to lean forwards. Try to just make it about the knee bending. Warrior two. Perfect. Hold this here for another breath. And then bring the forearm onto the thigh. Cartwheel the right arm alongside the ear. And look at your thumb. Reach down whole long side of your body. Keep the right, the left knee bent. Good. Then straight into the bind, but rest, come out and rest if you need. Wrapping the right arm around the back of the waist, internally rotating the left arm so that the crease of the elbow comes under the thigh and bringing it up underneath you to find the opposite hand 
and then to come back into the side ankle position because in order to find the bind we tend to lean forwards Well done. Very nice. Just checking it all out. Good job, everybody. And let's gently release. Inhale back to warrior two. So arms come up. And then exhale, lower the hands and straighten the front leg. Turn the toes and step the feet back together. Good. Very nice. Have a little shake out of the legs and then take the feet nice and wide apart bend the knees let yourself start to tip down towards the ground hold the opposite elbow let the head hang and have a little sway from side to side lengthening out the sides of your body lengthening out the sides of the waist Okay, and then slowly come back to the centre and come up to stand. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of practice with dolphin pose. And we're going to use the dolphin, which is basically a forearm downward dog. So if you're not comfortable with this, your alternative is to practice dog pose again. Uh, or you could do the forearm plank that we did earlier. But elbow dog or dolphin pose is super good for the shoulders. So you're going to come down onto your hands and knees and you're going to bring your forearms onto the floor. Your elbows need to be underneath your shoulders and instead of allowing your, your chest to kind of collapse down, I want you to really press into the forearms, press into the elbows to lift the back of your heart slightly towards the ceiling. And it might be that your practice this evening is just to lower the heart and then lift it, lowering and lifting. And this is a fabulous exercise to do for the shoulder strength and mobility. Those that want to go a bit further, press into the elbows, lift the back of the heart, tuck the toes under, lift the knees, and walk the feet towards the elbows a little bit closer. Let the head look, to, let the eyes look towards the toes, and move the heart in the direction of the toes. So you're really starting to open up into the back of the shoulders. Good, so little, you can do little heart lifts and lowers if you need to but it's a really great one to practice for upper body strength. So never be afraid to do, to do these hard things. Remember what Iyengar says, health is not a commodity to be bargained for, it has to be earned through sweat. <laughs> and this is it, this is the sweat bit. Okay, so floating the knees down onto the floor when you're ready. If you need to, take your knees wide apart, that's okay. And just rest into a child's pose for a moment. Rest the head on something if you need to. And take a couple of soft breaths. So if you practice dolphin pose and you thought, hmm, yeah, my shoulders need a little bit more work to stabilize and to strengthen them. Then the next thing that you're going to do tonight is dolphin press ups. So if you lift and look this way, I'm going to show you that in a minute because I'm going uh, show you that now. So I'm going to give another option of something different to do for the others who'd like to come up into an inversion. Um, so the dolphin press ups look like this. So your forearms are going to come back onto the floor. Try not to splay them out wide to the side, but a nice thing to do is to almost move them slightly closer together and then roll them out. So you're really trying to move the elbows to their respective edge of the mat, even though they're not moving off the floor. Then you're coming back into your dolphin pose and you're pressing back and then forwards and back and forwards. Now don't forget your Mula Bandha and your pelvic floor lift, the lower abdomen lift 
and you want to be doing as many of those as you can okay so that's your next step if you're thinking mm, my shoulders need a little bit of extra work for those of you that have done this with me before so this is pinch of my this is a forearm stand you ideally need to come towards your wall and a nice thing to have is your brick which you are going to put your hands around like this so my thumb I don't know if you can see that hopefully my thumb is on one edge and my fingers are on another and then you just can put that against the wall because that um, gives you some stability elbows are on the floor rolling them out coming into your elbow dog or for or dolphin pose and you could just stay here and practice this again or you can come up firm the legs Hold it there for, oh, sorry, hold it there for as long as you can. Try not to use the wall if you can. Press into the arms, press into the forearms, and just have a little bit of a play with that, but make sure you've got room, okay? Off you go. <laughs> I'm gonna keep, don't shake your head at me, Miss, Miss Baxter, I can see you. <laughs> so you could do your forearm press ups, so do your dolphin press ups if you like instead. Lots of you will be familiar with doing this with me, so just keep pressing into the elbows, lifting away from the floor, firming the legs, just like you do when you are in Shalabhasana. So squeeze the glutes, squeeze the hamstrings, bring the big toes together, but open up the balls of the feet, try and get the feet up as close towards the ceiling as you can. And don't be afraid to bring the hips back a little bit closer towards the wall, it's okay. Once you're up, keep lifting up through the belly, pelvic floor lifts. And Sophie, can you hear me? Good. <laughs> Why don't you come to the wall that you've got a little bit of space for? And just come and lie down and put your legs up the wall. Okay, can you see that all right? So that's, we're going to come into a pose like this anyway in a minute, everybody. So um, you've got this to look forward to once you've had a bit of a play. <laughs> okay. So Fantine, bring your shoulders closer to the wall. Walk your toes in closer, that's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. Now lift your tailbone towards the ceiling, lengthen your lower back and tuck your low ribs in. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> too many things. <laughs> okay. Are you all having a break on this screen? You're all having a little bit, you're having a five minutes over here, you lot. I can see you all looking at me. <laughs> Before I break the iPad, I've tried to turn into break this thing, honestly. Okay, once you have had a play, come down into child's pose, please, everybody, to rest. Sophie, stay where you're at. Okay, so Sophie, stay what you're doing. <sighs> and come into, everybody else, come into classic child's pose and take the hands around by the ankles, please. And just let the shoulders wrap themselves around the front of your knees. So just because you're at home and I can't, can't come round and talk to you all, doesn't mean that we don't have to, we don't get an opportunity to work hard, even in your own home. And what I'm really hoping that this uh, practicing from home is going to result in is that you carry on practicing from home because that's what us yoga teachers are supposed to be encouraging with you. Don't, don't wait to come to class to practice. Get into, get into a habit, get into a routine of practicing regularly at home and enjoying the benefits that it gives you as a result okay so coming up when you're ready everybody and you have a choice of what to do next if you have a luxury of some wall space option number one is easy option feet uh, sorry hips at the wall legs up the wall for uh vipurita 
If those of you that want to go into a shoulder stand, make sure that your shoulders are supported, you've got some padding underneath them. You could use the wall to lift yourself up and support yourself with the back of with your hands on your back. Those of you that are properly shoulder standing, seeing as you have all the stuff that you need, then my recommendation is that you get your blanket, you put it onto the middle of, uh, the middle of your mat, and you wrap your mat around the top of it. I don't think you can see that so well. So you've just got a little bit of a section there. And then you can lie with your shoulders towards the top edge. And remember, with a shoulder stand, your weight needs to be in your shoulders, not in your head. That's the most important thing. So you can come up by rocking up, hands onto the back of your body, support yourself, and then gradually get the feet up into the air. Spread out the toes, really actively work the lift up through the legs. Okay? Or it's just legs up the wall or legs in the air. You could put your uh, brick underneath the back of your hips so that it gives you a little bit of lift. So all of these fairly familiar stuff. If you ever have, if you're ever thinking, oh, I don't know this one or I'm not sure about that one, just hang around at the end and ask and we can go through anything that you need to go through. It's not a problem. Okay, so make sure that you're practicing nice and safely. Those of you that are in a shoulder stand, keep the weight into your shoulders. And if you want to come into Halasana, which is the feet coming behind your head, do make sure that there's space. It doesn't matter whether the feet come all the way down to the floor, that might be the practice that you, you get to eventually. But nevertheless, just having the feet in the air is great for the circulation. Legs up for wall pose is probably after the after the uh, reclining kind of butterfly that we did at the very beginning and have been doing at the very beginning. After that, I think legs up the wall pose is my second kind of go to restorative pose. Obviously, shavasana is is you know the the king if you like of rest, the king of restorative. But I quite like the butterfly, reclining butterfly, or Supta Baddha Konasana, and legs up for walls. So having a little bit of an arsenal of, of familiar poses that you can come to when you're feeling overwhelmed, overworked, like it's all just getting too much. Uh, and honestly, I, I just lay in the reclining butterfly pose, I think, for about 15 or 20 minutes the other day. Just did that, nothing else. And I felt so much better for it. Obviously, that chance to be still and that chance to kind of catch your breath. Okay, well done, everybody. So let's think about gently coming up and out and slowly lying down. Now, if you've been in a shoulder stand, I want you to lay on the floor and just be level for a couple of breaths. If you are in Vipita Karani, then maybe just slide yourself away from the wall a little bit and gradually come up to sit. Okay, so we're going to counterpose that with fish, which is very similar to the, um, to the reverse plank that you did at the beginning. Okay, so, so for Sophie, you might just wanna come into this reverse plank that we did where you lifted your chest and pressed into your hands and you can lift your chin and look up and that's a really nice counter pose position for a shoulder stand. For those of you that want to come into fish, you can sit onto your hands, you can drop your elbows to the ground, lift the heart, so you're really opening up the heart and let the head fall back and point the toes. If your head happens to touch the floor, please don't drop any weight into it. You don't have to drop your head back fully, you can just look up at the ceiling, but just take care of the muscles in the back of your neck. All right, good job. And then chin to chest everybody and come back up to sit. Legs out nice and straight please. Um, Sophie, maybe take your feet wider apart into a big V shape 
But for the rest of you, it's Paschimottanasana again. So the same pose that we've already done tonight. Make some space in the belly if that's appropriate. Make sure that your sit bones are untucked behind you and reach forwards, maybe towards the feet and just fold yourself in half. Or allow yourself to chin to chest, close the eyes, soften the shoulders now. They've worked really hard for you tonight. And now's your chance to just start to unwind and breathe. Okay. So very gently, let's inhale the way our way up. And we're going to do the same thing, a little bit of a seated twist just to finish, just to kind of release the spine before we come into, into lying down. So you can either do what we did at the beginning, which was either knees bent, or you can cross the legs. So seated cross-legged position. Those of you that want to, you can come into um, Matsi and Drasana pose. So where we cross the feet over, if you're familiar with that one, do that one. Um, good. Okay, so if you've got your right leg on top, you are turning to the right. If you have your left knee on top, you are turning to the left. Hold the knee or the, uh, you can hug the knee or take the knee to the opposite, uh, the elbow around the outside of the knee. Right hand comes behind you and you're turning to look over your shoulder again. And we're going to stay here for a couple of breaths. Keep lifting up and lengthening the spine on the inhalation and deepening the twist a little bit on the exhalation. Okay, take another breath in and out. And then as you breathe in, come back to the center and unwind. Turn yourself in the other direction, albeit briefly. And if your legs are, are raveled up, unravel them and change the cross. Okay, so sitting, if you can, changing the cross of your legs. So even if you're just sitting cross-legged, change the cross of your legs so the other leg is in front. Hold the knee with the opposite hand. Take the other hand behind you, maybe hug the knee if you like, elbow to the outside of the knee turning to look over the shoulder but not forcing the rotation do you stay even on your sit bones pressing down gently through the sit bones in a balanced way so that you can inhale and lift up through the spine keep the collarbones nice and wide chest open perfect one more breath in and out And then on your next inhalation, returning your way back, revolving around to the other side just to release the twist a little bit and then turning back to centre and unravelling your legs, leaning back into your hands, just give them a little bit of a shake. Good job. Okay, so that comes, that brings us to Shavasana. Um, grab an extra layer or a pair of socks or cover yourself over with a blanket. If you are going to leave out Shavasana because you um, are worried you might fall asleep, then you are welcome to leave the meeting and, and head off and do what you've got to do. I will talk you through a relaxation. I've got a nice little uh, thing to read to you tonight. Um, but it won't, be, it won't be a very long Shavasana. It will be about seven minutes. So hopefully that's not too long for you to, to fall asleep. If you do find yourself falling asleep, um, I, used to, I, I, I used to know uh, a painter called Johnny Jonas, I don't know if any of you have heard of him, and he used to work late, late into the night, and he would invert, so his sleeping pattern was all over the place, and so he would have a nap in his chair quite a lot during the day, and what he would do is he would balance a, a, a piece of cutlery, like a teaspoon, on his hand. And he would put it in such a way that it would, as soon as his hand went limp, the spoon would fall and would clutter to the floor. And he would do this. He would sit himself in his chair. He would relax. He would allow himself to nod off with this teaspoon balanced on his hand. 
And as soon as you nod off, you know what happens, you relax. And the teaspoon would clatter to the floor and it would wake him up straight away. And he said, he, he claimed that that was enough to enable him to feel rested. Just He just needed to nod off and then he would come back and it would all be good again. So that's, think about that in terms of you and relaxing and settling down and, and maybe have something that, you know, if you're going to nod off, that's going to, that's going to wake you up. Um, a phone might be nice, like set a timer on, on your phone for five minutes or for 10 minutes or seven minutes, like we said, and see whether that helps you to stay on track. Okay, so settle down. Be nice and comfortable. If you need to lie with your knees bent, that's fine. You can also lie on your side. And let your head rest. Let the weight of your head go into either a cushion or the mat so that you can start to release the jaw and the muscles around your neck, your throat and of course your shoulders. If you happen to be lying on your back, turn, take your arms a little distance away from the sides of your body and turn your palms upwards towards the ceiling. Move your chin a tiny bit closer towards your heart. and let the back of your neck lengthen slightly. Let your low back become softer. Let your toes roll out to the sides and the legs to be heavy as though the legs are moving away from your hips. And in essence, when we come to this still place in order to rest and to restore and nourish our system, we are putting the space back in because we are allowing ourselves as we release and to soften, we notice that our bodies want to become more spacious. The, the asana practice has allowed that release to happen. And now we need to make full use of it as we let the body bring it all back together. Just breathe softly in and out. The eyes closed. The breath even. Find the samavritti pranayama from the from the start of class if that helps you to stay focused. Back of your body really heavy and sinking into the mat. This is called a beautiful continuation. When we look at an orange tree, we see that season after season, it spends its life producing beautiful green leaves, fragrant blossoms and sweet oranges. These are the best things an orange tree can create and offer to the world. Human beings also make offerings to the world every moment of our daily lives in the form of our thoughts, 
our speech and our actions. We may want to offer the world the best kinds of thought, speech and action that we can, because they are our continuation, whether we want it to be so or not. We can use our time wisely, generate the energies of love, compassion and understanding, say beautiful things, inspire, forgive and act to protect and help the earth and each other. In this way, we can ensure a beautiful continuation. Okay, so let's take a deep breath in and a long, slow, gentle breath out. Breathe in and out a few more times, becoming aware of your fingers and your toes. Turn your head from side to side gently. And when you're ready, take a stretch out any way that feels good. When it feels right, bend your knees, roll yourself over to one side. And come gently round and up to sit. Sit up in any comfortable position that works for you. And we'll finish the practice by taking the fingers down by the sides. Inhaling and taking the hands above the head. Palms come together. 
And then exhaling the hands down to the front of the heart space. Close your eyes. Breathe in and out. and enjoy this lovely, open, energized space that you've created for yourself. When you're ready, take another breath in, open your eyes, bring your hands to your third eye, and wish a namaste. Well done. Okay, so good job everybody, well done. If you need to ask or would like to ask any questions or have um, something to talk to me about, hang around. But other than that, I will look very much forward to seeing you um, on Thursday, Thursday morning or Thursday evening for yin in the evening, nice soft gentle practice. And then we've got two practices on Saturday and Sunday to look forward to as well. So lots of lovely 